Yes, I think um, we can all start with the point of how harrowing and distressing experience that was watching the programme on Monday. Deeply disturbing um, for all of us who care passionately about the game. And um, here to talk about a mandate as chair and a responsibility to, lead to, to make changes, to move. Um, we've, we're confronted with challenging times. And um, as a parent of two young women, um, I found that deeply, deeply devastating. Um, I don't know other words to describe the experience that I've had in watching it. And so um, I think today is about uh, answering your questions, and I'm sure there are a myriad of different questions you have um, about what uh, we're going to do about this, what changes we're going to make, and how we're going to go about it. Uh, so please feel free. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll start. Um, how concerned are you at the moment about the reputation of the Welsh Rugby Union, both in Wales and outside of Wales? Rugby is a game um, that relies deeply on a culture on and off the field. It should equally reflect those cultures and values off the field. We have to make this game as, as welcoming. Uh, and the organisation, um, WIU, as welcoming, as inclusive uh, as it can be. Culture is deeply important. That's how organisations function at their best, is through a good culture, through a solid culture, representative of the values that you have as an organisation. Um, and so, um, rugby uh, and WIU is, a, is an iconic institution within Wales, deeply embedded in its DNA realise a huge amount of goodwill, which has been hard work won over many, many years. You work hard to get that goodwill. You know, uh, Many people have represented this organisation, both on and off the field, and worked their utmost to ensure its success on and off the field uh, over a number of 100 years. Um, but goodwill needs to be replenished. And people are now craving reassurance. And um, that we, are, we will address the issues we need to address and now we can drive the changes we need to do and bring that trust and faith back um, in that. And that's really important. From every young child, every girl or boy who wants to play, play the game of rugby, uh, from every uh, volunteer in the clubs up and down, for our stakeholders, for Welsh Government, for Sport Wales, for our partners, um, we reflect their values, they reflect our values. It's a reciprocal arrangement and we need to reassure um, everybody concerned, both within the organisation itself, our staff, our players, and I'm talking to players and staff about this very subject, how we're going to move forward with this. Um, but we need to reassure them that they will be addressed. Steve, in his, in his letter to the clubs last night, spoke that the culture of the organisation was where it needed to be between 2017 and 2019. At that time, he was on the exact board as financial director. With that in mind, at this point, is his position as CEO tenable? This is not of individuals. This is a collective. Culture is a collective. Um, it's all of us. It's we. It's us. It's not about it, uh, an individual. Um, it's more than that. This is a far more important subject than purely one individual. Um, we, need, we need to uh, embrace the challenge together, and that's how we bring this to where we need to bring. It will, obviously you will go through a process now yeah. of attempting to change certain things within the organisation, but there are still people on the board who were there many years ago when these allegations are referring to. Those people will now be entrusted with changing the organisation? Uh, my, my ambition here, um, and what I aim to do, is, as I said, I have a mandate as chair, is to bring in some external expertise here uh, and establish a, a task force, on a better expression, to ensure uh, we review everything and ensure that we establish, we develop the right culture for us to um, uh, ensure that that welcoming institution that we truly believe is, that is capable of being is the case. And you mentioned task force, uh, you're saying you're going to look about setting up yeah. People yeah. Obviously, this is early to get the detail attached to it, um, the scope of it, um, and we will do so. 
but we will require external expertise. Oh, I, I'm, I'm certain of that. We need that. This can't purely be an internal um, review. This has to be an external one with that genuine expertise we need from uh, other organisations. And we don't have monopoly wisdom here. Uh, other organisations, other sports, other entities um, might have not gone through similar experiences. We have to learn of those. And that comes through genuine knowledge and expertise. Um, you know, as I say, I don't have a monopoly with them, and I don't have all the answers here. I need to stretch out, reach out to others to help in that uh, endeavour. But I just reassure you, this is, this will be done. You know, it's my responsibility um, uh, to ensure, as chair, that that happens. And just last for myself, will the remit of people that comes in extends to how the game is running Wales as well as the culture within the Welsh rugby union? I think the scope is yet to be. We haven't got to that detail. It's very early days and we will convene a board at some point uh, imminently to which to discuss our next path and have a clear path in mind. Uh, and to reassure our stakeholders and Welsh Government I that, 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 that we're here, the First Minister, talking about it this morning in terms of right, in terms of the expectations there, but also you know the fact that we take this um, humbling and sobering experience to heart, um, but also ensure that there's uh, an outcome that we can all be proud of at the back end. Yeah, I think, um, to see change or to restore confidence, people will want change but probably quite quickly. Just to Coming on to Matt's question, Steve Dokes is the CEO, he's mm -hmm. accountable. Is it time for him to go? Uh, we're all ultimately accountable. This is not about individuals now. This is about a collective. It's we will sort this out. Uh, with, with a huge amount of help from externally, um, but we all have a responsibility. I bear responsibility on my shoulders as chair of this great, of the w Welsh Rugby Union, um, which has been such an integral part of my life. Uh, and to ensure that the culture is right for us to provide the outlet and the enjoyment, because this is ultimately rugby is about joy. It's about spreading joy. It's about engagement in communities, the length and breadth of our country, to fulfil such an integral role. But it doesn't mean we ignore some fundamental issues that we have to address, and we need to ensure that's the case. But it's not about one person. It's not only about me. It's not only about... Chief Exec, this is about a collective responsibility we all have to ensure that um, the culture um, on the back of, as I said once again, you know, and I can only find how deeply distressed I was watching the programme that was broadcast on Monday and the, the articles that followed it, uh, I find it devastating and um, I won't back off the challenge that we need to push this forward. Steve is the who runs into the mm -hmm. ship man day to day. Yeah. Do you still have the confidence in him to do that now? Yeah. I have total confidence that we will get this right. Does that include Steve? Uh, that includes Steve. Steve is chief exec of, of the Welsh Rugby Union. We will get this right. Okay. Just one, one thing on the statement. I'll reiterate, we, we will get this right. Just one thing on the statement yesterday, Steve spoke about him apologising for culture between 2017 and 2019. Steve became active in 2020 and then mm -hmm. the job. There's been grievances since then. There's been warnings from Amanda Blanc. Um, the accusation is that that was perhaps he was putting it on the last regime and this current regime mm -hmm. hasn't had to deal with it. How, how responsible is this current regime and Steve being for what we saw on the night? We take responsibility for what's happening now. I'm, I'm concerned about now and the future. Um, not here to talk about the detail of what's happened in the past. I need to ensure that people who want to, who, who need reassurance and confidence that rugby in Wales is where they want to be. They want to engage with Welsh Rugby Union. They want to play the sport. They want to join the, the clubs, the length and breadth of this country. That's what I'm craving for now. That's what I'm driving for. And my and our responsibility is to ensure that those changes happen. When you were watching the, uh, the programme, Ian, 
Were you sat with, with your wife and your children? Uh, I was. My, 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 um, my children are in London at the moment, so uh, my, my two young. But I've, I've spoken to them since. And it's uh, you know, the first question I asked my wife, you know, what are your thoughts? Um, and it's, 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 you know, it is palpable, the sense of sort of desperation even watching that, the harrowing. And I apologize again for those affected, not only by the events, but also by watching the program. Um, it was, I found it distressing. Uh, and I want to ensure, ensure that our game is, is and our organisation is fit to be a modern, outward-looking organisation. I think that's our drive here. Yeah. You talked about bringing outside activities. Yeah. Now, you've said that from the first day you came in, in terms mm -hmm. of uh, you're waiting for the other thing about to change the governance. Yeah. Can the two things dovetail together? And, and can you then use that as a proper way to, when you go around the regions, sub regions and districts, to tell them the message that things need to change and we need to have that outside um, experience? I'm, I have a mandate. Um, I sent a letter out to the start of the season that uh, uh, my ambition is to ensure that we have, we change governance to ensure we have uh, a board with the right skill set, with the right diversity, and not only gender, I'm talking about diversity in the broader sense diversity of thought, ethnicity, we want a truly representative game within Wales and, and Welsh Rugby Union is the governing body of our national game of Wales. So you need to be truly representative. Um, I firmly believe that the that clubs are very cognizant of that. I think it's up to us now to put a compelling, convincing enough case forward. It's the what are we doing, why are we doing it, how are we going to do it? And I think we need to get back to that sort of element here. Um, I'm, I'm convinced that we can, and we can evolve, we can progress. Governance is like painting the fourth bridge. It doesn't stop. It keeps going. Uh, we need to ensure we are a progressive organisation, and going back to where we started in this, a welcoming organisation, a game that's for all, that people feel comfortable, confident in engaging with. Will you be calling a board meeting pretty quickly yes. to discuss this? Yes. And find a way forward? Yes. Having a... Having a, uh, having a a path forward, a route forward here, I think that's fundamental um, to establishing and re-establishing, go back to your point, the trust and the faith we need to ensure exists. Yeah, because yeah, our, yeah. Ga our game, sorry, our game depends on it. Is yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Is there journey in that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we need to, we need to um, uh, establish that. Uh, I've already gone out in the, in the start of the year, um, and it's probably my, my first um, sort of in, uh, direct communication as chair, having only been in a week or so prior to that, um, in terms of uh, our ambition to, uh, to call an EGM, which I articulated in our note to clubs in terms of uh, moving forward our uh, governance. But there's also a part we're talking about culture as well. And yes, there are, it's intertwined, but it's also two separate elements as well. Yes, one can affect and influence the other, and vice versa. But um, it's nothing is, as we know in Wales, nothing is mutually exclusive in Wales. Everything interacts with, with, with each other. So it's, it's uh, we will go back once we finalise a date. We will then ensure, um, perhaps it's something we learned from the last time, is the fact that that engagement, that interaction, um, needed in the build-up to an EGM, so roadshows, continuing engagement, continuing communication, and establish why we're trying it, why we're doing it, and what are we hoping to achieve by it. Charlotte Martin's applications were the most harrowing. What would your message be to her now? Uh, well, as I said, I can only sincerely, and I mean heartfelt, apologies for all affected, all affected. Um, as I said, I, I, as, a, as a father of two young women, um, uh, I found it deeply distressing, and I can only apologise for all affected by this. On Monday night's programme, they referenced uh, Amanda Blanc's leaving speech, and mm -hmm. uh, she alleges that senior W members had used um, you know, sexist, misogynistic terms like the men are the masters and that sort of thing. Mm. Uh, 
have you ever heard that from WA yeah. board members? Have you ever yeah. been present? I, I'm not. It's we're not a place to talk about in individual um, aspects of this now. My my role today is to reassure everybody who's listening and watching and will read that um, we tend to make changes, significant changes. We will bring expertise to ensure we are, we find out that we can be the organization we need to be for the future of our game. And I'm playing such a fundamental role in Welsh life. We can't abdicate responsibility. We need to be front and center about this. And my responsibility is to lead that charge. On the topic of uh, reassuring people, um, one of the um, topics again on, on the programme was that the women's review that was commissioned, I think it was 2021, mm -hmm. hasn't been published, uh, hasn't been made public. Yeah. Is that something that you, you know, that needs yeah. to happen in your opinion? We, we, prob we need to, as part of them, you know, uh, as a broader sense of uh, our path moving forward. A, com we, a board conversation as it was commissioned by the board as to what we do. But let me reassure you that a lot of the work that Nigel Walker in particular has done and every else of the staff on um, women's performance department have, have acted upon many of those um, recommendations from the board already, uh, from the review already. And we can you do so. As I said, this won't stop. Um, you've only seen what the um, Women's World Cup contributed. The sheer joy and the interaction women had with the crowds, with um, broadcasters, with sponsors and so on. Um, we are committed to the women's elite game and intend to ensure that it um, continues to improve, continues to advance forward because elite sport doesn't stop, doesn't slow down for anybody. It continues to progress and Part of Nigel's role is to ensure that that's the case, but to confident the fact that it's very up and much. It is a growth area of our game. Um, yeah, trust is a, is a yeah. Big thing. Yeah, it is. How yeah. big the job have you got as a union to get that back? And will you ever get there? We've got a job. I have no doubt about it. As I said, goodwill is uh, is earned the hard way, and um, you can lose it very quickly. I'd hope that there is still a residue of of sort of of that goodwill in there, but it's been tarnished, no doubt about it. And we have to address that and build that trust, as you rightly said. Uh, that's going to take a bit of time, but we can espouse all we want. It's about enacting. It's about. Um, I know I can say, I can give all the words in terms of reassurance um, that. That reassurance, that trust, that faith is only gained by actual delivery. And you've been around the game for a long time in Wales, right? Yeah. 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 Can you remember a time when it's been as long as this? Yeah. Um, it's hard at the moment because you're embedded in it, you're enmeshed, you're immersed in it now. Um, and we live in challenging times. We've got other issues ongoing at the same time, but nothing has more significance than this. If you were to offer me a grand slam or successful sort of outcome to this and resolving this culture comes first. Getting the culture right would trump a grand slam for me. Can you change the governance? Can you need to modernise it? Have you are you? Uh, okay? It's um, commission a review to look at the governance and um, hence the AGM last year where we got elements of what we wanted through, we didn't get all. Um, and my intention, as I, as I sent in a letter over the new year to the clubs, is the fact that we'd like to come back to the clubs to talk more and to further and be uh, progress down this route. Um, it's for us to convince, to compel, um, through evidence, through engagement, and through in, um, with the clubs to get that through. Uh, as I said, it doesn't stop. Um, constantly revisit, constantly review. Um, you review performance. I come from a, an international rugby background. As reviewed every time I come off the field. That's the nature of things. Companies review their performances, uh, review their governance annually. That's what you do. You respond to your shareholders. Um, and so it's, 
it's, a, it's coming on us to be the same. We shouldn't be resistant to it. But it's about us convincing that's the case. Can I say last one, guys? Or? Yeah, no, you said you were, you were devastated. Huh? Mm. In these, uh, Revelations came out. We, this has been in the public domain for, for 10 months since last March. Were mm. you not devastated 10 months ago? I, to, nothing beats actually, see, you know, in terms of the actual scene in front of your face, when you see raw emotions, when you see um, you know, the parts there that came to the fore that you wouldn't have been aware of. So how um, do you feel when the union was hiding behind non-disclosure agreements? Yeah, a commission, I, a commission yeah, report, yeah. which they haven't made public, even though they've been lambasted by former female players, mm -hmm. coaches, business mm -hmm. people. Surely this task force that we talk about, to have any prospect of restoring trust, that process, that outcome, their report, has to be transparent, has to be public, doesn't it? I think the scope and where we go with it, that, I think that's the detail we need to bear down. I, I think going back to your start, how we regain that trust, we have to figure out a way to, um, to figure out the trust, re regain that trust. But again, I go back to actions. We need to enact. It's all well and good commissioning something, but if you don't act as the back end of something you commission, then I question the value in it. Uh, we need to ensure that the value is there. I, I think for our own, for the well-being of our game, for the well-being of this organisation, um, that means so much to so many people, for the staff, for the players, for our supporters, um, for our stakeholders, we have to ensure that that's the case, Graham. Alex, last one. Can I just ask you, how concerned are you by the reaction of some of the BYU sponsors? We all know money's oh. tightening, much up below there, obviously. Backing, backing you financially. Yeah. Yeah. What's your message to them? They, they call for action. My, my, my message to them is, as I've articulated throughout, throughout the conference already, is a fact that give reassurance that we will enact upon this, that we will challenge ourselves to be better, because we have to be better. We have to, we simply have to be better. Um, there's no standing still here, there's no reflecting back, and it's about looking for the present and looking to the future as to how we grow. And we, we look at our sponsors as being more than purely sponsors in financial terms. They're our partners. Um, they share our values, we share their values, reciprocate, and they need the reassurance um, which we will show. We will engage with them as we will engage with Welsh Government, with Sport Wales, and with other stakeholders, with players, with staff. And um, when we establish the task force um, and bring that genuine expertise, which I will play a significant role in as well, and vice chair if it, if it comes to that, uh, along with an independent, um, we, 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 I think, well, I don't, I don't think, I know we need to engage fully with our our partners, our commercial partners, they're so important. They produce so much of the resource that we need to ensure our game is sustainable, is our game flourishes, it reaches into every pore of every community on our game. Um, and um, we, we, we appreciate and cherish their support and we need to ensure that it continues and enlarged upon. That's significantly important to us but new assurance we will be engaging. We will ask them, we will learn from them, understand where we need to go forward. As I said, I do not have the monopoly in wisdom here. No one does. We will gain this through the genuine expertise and knowledge of everybody we communicate with. There's always one more last one, isn't there? So just because um, Hamish hasn't spoken. I have it. Could you um, put any sort of time scale on I said, things like the task force, yeah. the EGM, all the stuff you're talking about? No, I, I think time, it's early for that yet. I think we haven't re uh, sat down as a board yet. We will do so imminently. And I think that'll give us a better understanding where we're going. But put it this way, it, I don't think there's a long time frame here. So the task force will be able to explore everything? Uh, there's, no, there's, no, there's no scope here yet. We haven't addressed that yet. Past the, 
um, the ta a task, foot, uh, task force's role would be to ensure that scope is right. But there will be a scoping exercise on it. Okay, guys, thank you very much. Thank you, Ian. Okay.